How can someone be so insanely talented at something? How can a 16-year-old boy manage to reach top 20 in the world rankings of chess? For all of you who have always wondered about this, this podcast with Gukesh is an eye-opener. Gukesh opens up his heart and speaks to me for nearly 90 minutes. They say that a player's chess flows from the kind of person he or she is from within. I believe through this conversation, you will get to know Gukesh better. Not the chess player, but the person. This is your first podcast. Yeah, this is my first. Well, I've been living my life like doing podcasts all the time. Uh-huh. Like I keep talking to people. Yeah. But I think this is the first time we're doing it in this kind of a setup. Mm. So, uh, you know, I was thinking what is the first question I should ask you. First question I wanted to ask you is, uh, do you have a girlfriend, Bukesh? <laughs> no, this is not on. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Everything is on. <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> you don't have? No. But you know, at, at uh, your age, mm-hmm. what is your feeling like, you know, um, having a girlfriend and so on? Would that impact your chess? Would, what is your feel on that? Yeah. I don't know. Like, probably it does uh, take some time away from chess. I haven't really thought about it too much. But uh, yeah, I'm also. I don't think this is the right age for for uh, those things. Yeah. True. True. It might uh, might not make a huge difference, but it still takes, I guess, time away from just so. Yeah. You know, when when uh, I look at you, mm-hmm. and even when you answered this question, which was more like you know just as a conversational conversation starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it feels to me like you are, you have so much of uh, determination, so much of self-control, so much of focus. Mm. Where does that come from at such a young age? I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just my, how my parents, uh, uh, I guess my parents are doing that. They wanted me to fully focus on me. What I do, enjoy it, uh, enjoy it, uh, what I'm doing, of course, but they wanted me to be fully focused, and uh, I guess it just comes from my parents. Like, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, don't, I haven't really done anything like go to a psychologist or something like that, but uh, my mom used to tell me a lot of things. Uh, be successful and not not uh, get distracted and things like that so i guess it's just uh, how my parents uh, brought me your parents i think have played a big role uh, yeah. in your chess career yes there's uh, no doubt about that because you are also the only son mm-hmm. and i think a lot of their uh, resources time energy mm-hmm. has been uh, with you mm-hmm. We know that your dad has traveled a lot with you. Yeah. Uh, and your mom is, does travel within India sometimes with you. Mm-hmm. So, how would you say is their role uh, bifurcated? Like, uh, does your dad focus on more on your chess? Your mom focuses more on your psychology or how is it? Uh, yeah, so first of all, I, I think both my, both my parents just wanted me to... I mean, it was not a tough decision, yeah, for putting me in sports and uh, not taking academics seriously and I imagine they must have gone through a lot of issues but uh, when you know I was just starting out and I took a step back from academics but uh, they always wanted me to do something that I enjoy and uh, for, for them it's more important to uh, you know like do what you enjoy, you have your own path, then follow follow the common common advices. So I imagine they must have gone through like criticism uh, 
lot of issues but uh, they never let anything affect me and uh, yeah for, uh, of course i'm fully grateful mm-hmm. for that and other than that they have uh, also once i started showing uh, you know interest and i got some uh, you know good results they have also made a lot of sacrifices you know. yeah father almost uh, quit his, quit his job as a doctor he he uh, now regularly he doesn't go you know he doesn't work regularly because he has to travel with me and a uh, lot of other things so my dad uh, like he he takes care of my uh let's say things around chess uh they don't uh, they don't interrupt uh, i mean they don't uh, they don't really try to you know make me some make give me advice in chess mind in pure chess terms but uh, like they take care of my father especially take care of uh, like takes care of social media or invitations travel all those things and my mother uh, she is there for emotional support let's say mm-hmm. like whenever uh, i feel low or something i my mom is like the one who makes me feel uh, uh, makes me uh, feel better at that time so uh, yeah i think it's kind of accurate to say like my dad takes care of all the technical things and my mom is uh, there for like emotional support and whenever i need anything it's uh, it's there so yeah both uh, both are very important equally important to me and what they do is i mean <laughs> yeah it's obviously amazing that's true absolutely your father is a surgeon i believe uh, yes yeah uh, he's a ear nose throat uh, ENT surgeon, surgeon and my mother is a microbiologist right and so you know right now what your father has done you know slowing down his career mm-hmm. seems like a very successful thing you know because you have just surpassed all the expectations mm-hmm. you have reached world number 18 you are just 16 years old but i'm sure that at some point when you were young and just starting out let's say you were 10 years old mm-hmm. i remember you were around 2000 rated at that point traveling to tournaments yeah. going to different places you losing to opponents your tournaments not going so well mm-hmm. at that phase how did this thing come about that you know you have to pursue chess he had to slow down his career you had mm-hmm. to not go to school i guess the uh, especially in uh, crisis uh, moments where i was going through a crisis it was and when uh, i was not as promising as as now as i am now uh, it was tough for them uh, i think they were not at all sure if they made the right decision mm. uh, like, theoretically but they knew that uh, this is what i wanted to do uh, this is what i really enjoy and that's like the biggest motivation for for them and of course they must have gone through a lot of issues but they never really seemed to be uh, like they never uh, showed showed uh, how much how much problems they had to go through and i was also quite young at that point to understand i think so yeah it, it must have been very tough for them i i really don't know how it, how they handled that but uh, yeah yes <laughs> they they probably did the right thing yeah for sure they did the the most amazing thing by letting you pursue what you love uh, where does this love from chess stem do you if you had to trace it back you know sometimes it's just natural like now you can spend hours and hours analyzing chess playing chess but who do you think was the reason behind this love growing within you because i think someone has to put those seeds in uh, it's uh, i guess some some of it it also comes from my parents both of them are sports lovers they I mean my father used to play a lot of sports and my mom she played uh, one or two she but she used to love sports love watching sports they were they were very good at sports uh, my father was quite good at uh, cricket he played for his uh, 
I mean, he, I think he was playing in state level when he was wow. uh, at school and and then uh, in college he used to represent the college and stuff like that. So he was quite good at uh, cricket. But uh, yeah, at that point, like he couldn't uh, pursue. He wanted to be a cricketer, uh, I think as far as I know, and uh, he couldn't pursue pursue it as a career because of because of uh, a lot of reasons. Also, at that time, it was, I guess, it was not very easy uh, to have a career other than academics. So maybe it, uh, my mom always. Like I, I was also when when I was young, I used to play a lot of sports, cricket, football, badminton. Like I used to love all kinds of sports. So, yeah, the sports love maybe it just comes from my parents, and my mom actually. I think I've uh, uh, we we had a nice uh, uh, quiz about this. My which uh, which sport did uh, my mom want to in- enroll me at first. <laughs> and uh badminton no it was tennis 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 yeah so yeah it was also kind of lucky that uh you know we went to the went went uh, for enrolling in a tennis academy and uh the trainer i think i don't remember this but what what my mom told was that like the trainer just said that i'm, I'm very weak or <laughs> too skinny <laughs> yeah <laughs> too skinny to play tennis <laughs> It was kind of a lucky, lucky break, and uh, yeah, at that point I I don't think I was like very obsessed with the, uh, obsessed with chess or anything. But uh, my mom again, it was my mom's decision to enroll me in chess. There was a summer camp in my school, and uh, I knew the rules already because my parents used to play chess sometimes at home just for fun, and I used to just sit. Uh, sit near them and watch uh, watch and uh, I learned the rules eventually and then I enrolled in summer camp and uh, I think that that is where I had like my first sessions like serious sessions of training and uh, like my initial coaches they used to give me uh, positions to you know positions to solve like made in one made in two they used to give me books and Asked me to finish it within one or two days, and I just used to uh, complete it. Like uh, with my father, we used to do it. Uh, used to just complete the uh, the books as soon as I got home. So uh, it was. Uh, I don't know why exactly I love chess. Uh, where exactly the love for love for chess uh, came from, but um, I don't know it. I just uh, I was just somehow attracted to it, mm. like uh, and then for like right now, if you ask me what excites me about playing chess so much, or what I love about uh, chess so much, it's uh, it's so complex that uh, like it's been played for so many years, so many centuries, and it can't be like can't be solved. Yeah? Yeah. Still, so there are so many things to still be learned and. It's just so complex, and uh, that's what I love most about chess. But uh, yeah, there are also other things. So. I really don't know why I got attracted to chess at first. But, uh, yeah, once I got interested in it, I just couldn't stop uh, stop thinking about it, or, uh, spending time with chess. You know, you you don't stop thinking about chess, but you have gone into it in such a big way mm-hmm. that you've left everything, right? You yeah. have left the biggest thing which uh, a kid does is to go to school. And uh, somehow you never, I think, went very seriously to school since a very young age. Maybe you went till what, fourth or fifth grade? Yeah, I, I think I was good at uh, academics until a certain point. Uh-huh. I think I was the school topper and third it should be board. right because the way you play chess it is obvious that if you put that application into your academics mm-hmm. you would ace it i mean i don't think uh, being good at one thing like translates into other things but like uh, if i enjoy something and i spend a lot of time i'm generally 
quite good at it. So, yeah, I used to spend a lot of time with studies until third or fourth uh, standard. And yeah, around the uh, fourth standard, we made, I mean, my, I was too young to make any kind of decision. So, my parents made the decision that you know, we'll take a break from school for one year and see how how much I improve or how it um, how it goes and uh, I did really well and like it uh, went to the next year and I was just keep uh, keeping on improving and parents thought okay if I really enjoy doing this and I'm quite good at it then you know it's normal it's uh, it's good good to just uh, pursue a career you know? mm. so yeah from fourth standard I haven't been going to school regularly but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't really regret it as You don't regret it at all? Is it because you think that you never experienced it or do you see other people out there? And I, I know of chess players who after a point feel like, oh, I couldn't enjoy my childhood so much. I couldn't meet friends. I couldn't go to playground to play. I couldn't go to parties. Does that ever crop up in your mind? Mm. I guess there are some things that uh, that I am missing, uh, but there, there are also some things that uh, you know, like people, children who go to school don't experience. <laughs> of course, <laughs> there are a lot of things in fact. So, I mean, not having friends, I, I think I do have friends in the, the chess world, mm. and I have a lot of fun. Mm. It's obviously there is also some competition, and it's not always like. Uh, not uh, the friendliness is not cannot be compared to like uh, other, like school friends but uh, I still have friends we still have a lot of fun mm. but let's say I get to travel a lot mm. meet uh, different people very interesting people so these kind of things uh, other I mean people who go to school I, I don't think they have it so uh, I have certain things that, uh, like other uh, other children don't don't have, and I also miss out on some things. But it's important that I'm doing uh, what I enjoy. So mm. it's never really a huge regret. Uh, regret. How did your English become so good? Because generally you learn mm. grammar in school and you you read books. Yeah. But your English is so so good. You know, uh, another example of a chess player who I think did not pursue her education or academically is Harika. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever I meet her, I never get this feeling that she never went to school. Mm -hmm. You know, she's always so pleasant to talk. She's so um, mm -hmm. social in every aspect. And I mm -hmm. think the same applies to you somehow. Uh, when I meet you, I never get this feeling that you have not gone to school or you have not socialized. You are so um, you are so empathetic. You are so friendly. You are so deep. Yeah. I don't know. I mm, about my English. I think it was just that. Uh, you know, I uh, had uh, met people. Uh, was slowly conversed with them and slowly uh, my English got better. I, I mean, it, I can't say it's perfect. It's yeah, still it's like, very good. I mean, it's it's good. It's uh, manageable, but uh, I don't think it's uh, very fluent or anything. I still make some mistakes, obviously. But um, like just uh, like few years back, I think it was much much worse. But uh, as much as I like started having uh, conversations with people, uh, I read books, I read articles, and, like things like that. It slowly, uh, I never really had like uh, very good uh, English education as such, but just by experience, it got uh, got better. Same with my Hindi also. Like few years ago, I didn't, I didn't know anything in Hindi, but now I had uh, friends and. I started watching like uh, Hindi movies and uh, it eventually got, ex uh, I it got better with experience. Mm. So 
Now I can understand Hindi very well. Still can't speak uh, speak it very well, but yeah. Thoda baat to to bol lete. Thoda thoda. Um, but uh, socializing, I I don't know. I not sure if I'm very social. Uh, in general, I'm. I mean, obviously with close friends, I'm very friendly and. Uh, i'm very comfortable but still i'm not like a very social person i can i can't make friends very easily i think but with i have a I have a friend circle and because like you know how uh, <laughs> you know me better i think <laughs> you know I, i just know that once the tournament ends you somehow unhook yourself <laughs> yeah. something you go you go to your room maybe you change your dress or something yeah. and then a new uh, from gukesh a guki appears <laughs> who, is, who is like uh, suddenly i think all the pent up energy is released yeah after tournaments it's also important to just uh, let go of that uh, pressure you know like there's obviously a lot of stress during tournaments and uh, after tournaments like if some friends are around you just yeah hang out and just relax for for some time so uh yeah i don't i'm not sure if i'm like very social but not uh, like completely you know and i it's not like i don't have any friends i don't i don't mingle with anyone so yeah i think i have a good balance think when you were becoming a strong player mm-hmm. and reaching towards your iim title and so on mm-hmm. i uh, i believe that your journey and your family faced quite a few financial hardships i've also spoken with your dad and got to know that did you ever feel that in the journey that there are financial hardships and you need to be careful about your spending and so on yeah i i i know that uh, we we had uh, like very serious issues financial financial issues I mean, even after becoming an IM, I think even in twenty eighteen when I was trying to break the GM record, Angus GM record, I think twenty eighteen was probably the worst year like financially for for my parents. I mean, uh, mostly. Uh, I always knew that we were uh, not we had some issues, but uh, they never really told me the details and never really felt like made me feel that. you know there's lot of uh, problems and never really uh, uh, like affected my chess uh, but uh, yeah i mean we couldn't have done it alone of course we had some like i mean my parents college mates my parents studied in the same uh, college uh, they had the the group of friends from their batch uh, like we are very close in general and uh, they they have always supported me like uh, they always wish me well and uh, they always encouraged me but at that point uh, when they knew that we were uh, having uh, troubles they you know they did then just uh, voluntarily just like sponsored me for uh, for my tournaments to go like uh, abroad travel and play strong events and uh, also my family of course uh, they also helped uh, helped us a lot and uh, without without uh, this you know like with, the, with these people with these friends family family support it, it would have been uh, impossible so uh, yeah but uh, all this uh, all this uh, stress stress and pressure they they my parents they just uh, like a wall uh, they just uh, uh, allowed me to focus on my chess to improve and keep playing keep performing at uh, at my best and not not let anything uh, affect affect my performance so i was uh, still enjoying like chess and i'm just i was just having fun even though i knew problems i, I didn't know to which extent uh, things like that but uh, yeah i'm pretty sure my parents went through 
went through uh, like the toughest phase of their life at that point. But yeah, I mean, like, I have to give full credit to my parents, yeah. my family, and friends who supported me. So yeah, it's it's amazing to have people who who like care. Uh, care and support so much right yeah. absolutely and i think uh, now that you are at this level of course you are still looking for a sponsor but i think financially things ease out much more yeah once you yeah. become a super gm mm-hmm. yeah now uh, i mean compared to like few years back we are, we are quite comfortable i mean we can play tournaments without uh, like double i mean without thinking and we are quite comfortable but of course uh, for training uh, Vaka is also playing a huge important uh, important part I'm getting high class high level training and Vaka is uh, taking care of uh, you know the, the expenses and, um, and uh, they are also encouraging me it's I'm getting to you know, interact with Vishy sir like regularly. All these things uh, are uh, you know came together uh, and so huge thanks to Vaka. Yeah. You know they. I mean, we are quite comfortable, but it surely helps a lot uh, that Vaka is taking care of the training. Because I I believe a good trainer mm-hmm. is so expensive. Yeah. Like. Sure. I know for a fact that even when you want a decent trainer, you have to be spending somewhere in the range of 50 to 100 euros an hour. Could go much more with your level. Uh, and if you have to do that across the days, months and years, mm-hmm. that turns into a serious sum. Yeah. It will, I mean, it surely be a, a challenge, but I mean, Vaka, it's a... Uh... I mean, what can I say? They are doing a really great job. I mean, not only me. There are like other, other students, and um, I mean, I think it's Vaka is like a, a really, really great thing for chess in in India. And huge, huge thanks to Vishy sir and uh, Westbridge for coming up with this idea. It's, it's really benefiting me and a lot of other mm. talented players. So. You know, uh, your relationship with Anand, I've known that you, of course, uh, looked up to him mm-hmm. and you got to meet him once you became a GM, you went to his house. Mm-hmm. There was this very nice uh, picture of you and then Prag joined in, Vishnu and Raghvi were there. And over the years and what you have met him, what do you feel about him? Mm-hmm. Uh, as a as a person you know as a player i think you've interacted quite a lot yes. also at the olympiad he helped you and all of that is in a professional capacity mm-hmm. but do you also spend time with him in a personal capacity interact with him and so on yeah i mean like uh, what can i say about wishes i think i mean i can say things everyone already knows i mean he's obviously one of the greatest players ever from he made india indian chess what what it is today he's he you know, came out of nowhere india was not uh, you know not such a super power uh, he he just uh, you know made india what it is and he's a, obviously you know, like one of the greatest uh, legends of our game and uh, even though he's so great, he's such a great player. He's how uh, friendly and how how uh, genuine he is. I think it's it's uh, one of the qualities that I really admire. He also has a wonderful sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we mostly discuss about chess and things around chess, but we've also um, had uh, like chats and things so i mean he's he's very friendly and i mean wishes her is like 
I always enjoy his company. Uh, yeah, when you're with Vishesha, you just uh, you learn a lot and also you enjoy so much. You keep laughing and he cracks so many jokes. And so yeah, I mean, I just admire uh, admire Vishesha. I think every every Indian chess player. I mean, every chess player basically, and also non chess players are I think so. Uh, yeah. He he once mentioned that he trained with a lot of youngsters when he played Norway chess. I think it was last year. Well, did you also play a lot of blitz or games with him? Yeah, we do play training games so, uh, regularly. Um, I I'm not sure if I, I played uh, exactly in, before Norway, but uh, I remember before some events that. We both had, we were training, we were playing training games. So. Uh, I mean, it surely helped me a lot. It, you know, playing with him mm -hmm. and let's say in training games as well, mm -hmm. sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah. When you win, it does give a lot of confidence, right? That yeah, sure. You, yeah. Have, you have maybe outplayed someone who has been at the top of the sport for years mm -hmm. and that is intangible. You know, you cannot uh, uh, yeah. put so much of confidence in you. Yeah. It, First of all, it gives me a lot of confidence to play against species or like uh, to even analyze with him gives me a lot of confidence. But also like you don't get to play one of the greatest uh, players ever on a regular basis. Yeah, it's not something that everyone has. You get a lot of confidence, but you also learn a lot of chess things. Um, you get insights into how he how he thinks he approaches the game. So, I mean, it surely helped uh, help me a lot. Uh, just interacting with him, playing training games. I think it it's uh, it was a huge, huge boost for me. It uh, started in the lockdown, so uh, it was a huge uh, boost for me, for sure. Amazing. And you know, you you are one of the five or six or seven talented youngsters in Indian chess. I don't sort of say all are equal, you know, some are more, some are less, but there are all these talents who are doing well, mm -hmm. uh, especially few names that come up are Arjun, Prag, Nihal. How do you look at them? Uh, do you also uh, somehow think that each of you is different in a deeper sense, like as a person, like you are uh, you think you think deeply a lot, and Arjun is different than you, or or what is your feeling? Because as players, I can clearly sense hmm. uh, that each one is different yeah. in their own way. They're taking their own path, hmm. but as as people, as humans, how how do you look at them? Are they your friends? Some maybe more closer than the others. Yeah, uh, I would say. Currently, the strongest now are me, Arjun. I mean, not strongest, but let's say who had uh, good results. Or let's say rating wise, me, Arjun, Preg, and uh, Nihal are on the top. Of course, Ramanak is extremely talented as well. And some others like Rana, Leon, Aditya Mittal. I think everyone is very, uh, very talented. and as a person, I think uh, we all are like quite similar. Mm -hmm. We are, I think, very friendly. Everyone is very friendly and very nice people in, in general. Uh, and yeah, we are, I mean, most of them are very close friends. I know, I don't know, like, some of them are very, I don't know some of them very well. But uh, for me, the closest people are like, Arjun, Leon, Nihal, I'm very, very close with them. And also we are like uh, competitors, yeah? so mm. of course there's rivalry, um, but uh, but we enjoy, we enjoy time as friends away from, away from the chessboard and when we are at the chessboard, when we are competing against each other, we are, we are rivals and it's, I think, a very, uh, 
very nice thing at least i enjoy this relationship with uh, with them a lot do you think as you will play more and more with them that relationship will remain or do you think it will get more and more intense because you know you'll start competing at tournaments which will have more stakes you know maybe grand prix and candidates and world championships and so on um i hope it remains the same uh, like for example if you see vishy sir uh, like he played uh, two world championships against gelfand and gramnik for example but even though i mean world championship is like the highest uh, stage you can compete in but they were still uh, good friends still they they yeah. they're good friends so it remains the same i think it uh, it will be very good but yeah let, let's see to how how do you explain this phenomenon that all of you like four or five of you have re- reached close to 2700 you have crossed it everyone's thinking about what is the secret here i've been following indian chess i don't see any some kind of a pattern as such you, you can say that right now west bridge anand chess academy is something that kind of links all of you together but you all had become very strong even when it did not exist and you all had become very good mm. so what what do you think is the reason you include you know your story but that from one country so many talents came out is it a sheer co- coincidence you think or is there some some logic behind it um i don't know actually um maybe it's just that uh, like it's there's just so much competition that it motivates motivates us so much mm. um let's say i play a good tournament and others get motivated by that and uh, others like uh, play play good tournament and it motivates me so i think it's uh, there is surely competition and surely very healthy um but uh, i don't know why like why exactly there are so many very very talented players from the same country mm. surely chess is becoming like more popular i guess i don't know ex- except for the uh, very healthy competition uh, i don't know if there are like other inc- i mean reasons or it's just for instance i really don't mm-hmm. yeah everyone's uh, sort of you know there are few reasons people can think of mm-hmm. but yeah essentially everyone's taken a different path to reaching the top yeah. you know so it's very um one thing which is very unique to you is that you like to sleep a lot why is that unique <laughs> <laughs> at least i don't sleep that much but is that something you think is very important for you as a player I don't know. Uh I guess I guess it's, it's working important. till now. <laughs> no, it's just that I I like sleeping. So. <laughs> you you would not trade it for something else like let's say for example mm-hmm. on a okay once in a while anyone can wake up. Let's say today I told you let's go to watch the sunrise. It's beautiful. You may say okay fine. But if on a regular basis something interrupts your sleep would you ever choose to do that mm, not really uh, like uh, i think in general chess players like to sleep a lot i mm. know that arjun nihal they also sleep a lot uh, i think they maybe we are in the same level like uh, uh, how the time we are sleeping but uh, i don't know maybe because we are spending so much time uh, in chess we are uh, like uh, you know, thinking about just so much that we maybe we just need sleep uh, but uh, if if something is like interrupting my sleeping uh, no like interrupting my sleep i don't think i will i will do that i I really like sleeping and I also I guess it's good for my chess also so mm. 
although sleeping schedule maybe it's not very healthy what i'm following right right now why do you say it's not healthy like i mean i sleep late night and wake up very late Yes, but usually you are practicing or you are doing something related to chess. Or... Yes, but still, I think. Uh, I, I think maybe in the long run it's not, like very healthy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like. Uh, it can go very very late, so. Yeah, maybe I should correct that, but. Uh, till now it's. It's not been too bad, but uh, yeah, I guess in the long run I have to. I have to correct my sleeping schedule. While, while sleep is something that you really hold close to yourself, I think food is not something that you really hmm. uh, love or something like that. You just eat because you have to function in a day. Hmm. There's nothing like, oh, give me food, I'm very hungry. I think you you just very, even if you, no one gives you food, hmm. you're fine. Yeah, like, I'm not a foodie for sure. Um, I do like have some like favorite dishes and I like to eat uh, them, but curd rice, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, come on, like you might say something like pizza. I mean, of course, I'm not saying that curd rice is bad. It's something that you've been eating since a very young age, right? Mm, yeah, so... I do like like curd rice. I mean, some other things, but uh, food, I like. I try to. Uh, eat uh, and I try to not skip meals and if uh, if if there is something to do and I have to skip meal or two I I'm not really uh, very worried about it but when I when I eat I try to eat like eat healthy uh, I don't eat much for like taste but just uh, uh, I try not to eat too much junk food but for example, sometimes I eat cakes and when I feel like eating something, I, I do, but uh, as I try to not eat too much uh, junk food, so, yeah. Yeah, but I was talking about these top players, mm-hmm. you know, athletes who from a young age uh, do not touch ice creams, have a lifestyle which is very self-restraint oriented. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you also think that a chess player has to pursue that form of self-control to reach top levels of chess? I think being healthy in in any field it's very important. I think in general being healthy is good. Um, I'm not like very disciplined in like food habits. I mean, I try to eat as much uh, as healthy as possible, but it's not like I'm very, very strict with myself. Um, but I think uh, like the physical physical part is also very important in chess. Yeah? I mean, you, let's say you're like playing world championships and for example, the game six against uh, mm. Carlson Nepomneshi. Uh, I mean, you can imagine how draining it might have been. Yeah. Yeah? So much stress and close to eight hours and such a complex game i think uh when you have games like those regularly at the highest level it's it's just uh, too draining so if you're not uh, healthy if you're not fit i think it's it's very hard to uh, handle those kind of uh, kind of games and also tournaments like vikanze it's uh, it's very draining yeah? so mm-hmm. i think when you maybe at the low levels it doesn't matter so much but when you get to the highest levels you play the highest play the absolute strongest uh, opponents tournaments it's i think it's very important and that's also something that my trainers and my and uh, vishy sir has has really put a lot of emphasis emphasis on uh, so yeah I, I try to stay as healthy as and uh, healthy and fit as possible Amazing. Uh, you know, at uh, the level where you are right now, uh, it's not so easy to reach this stage because you have to constantly improve. Like we see a lot of players who stagnate at a specific level. But for you, stagnation, even if it comes, 
it's for a few months and then you sort of break through that phase and you move further is there something that you do which helps you keep on moving up all the time is there some kind of a thought process you have uh, or, or habits which doesn't let you remain you know that helps you constantly keep improving your chest strength mm-hmm. i think improving chest is just practice mostly mm. you you need to work uh, every day you need to uh, spend a lot of time in chest that's how you get better at chest but i think it surely there'll be even if you do all the right things then sure be surely be a uh, crisis moments or uh, moments where you get stagnated and i had a few uh, one like around 25 the jump from 2500 to 2600 was very tough uh, it was also maybe due to the pandemic but uh, in general i i became like 2500 and 2019 and uh, i crossed 2600 in like the second half of 2021 i think so it was uh, it was uh, a very tough period but like i the main thing for me is that if i feel like i'm improving like if i feel like i'm doing the right things i'm, I'm improving then mm. and i don't care so much i know that results are going to come at some point but if i feel like i'm not improving i'm not not improving then i try to uh do something uh, that i've never done before like experiments and mm-hmm. maybe change the way i train or something some things like that so yeah but i think whatever you do you are going to uh, go through some crisis and uh, very tough periods and at some point so it's just uh, i i would see it as a learning experience um, so i think in those two years like uh, i learned a lot from the the jump i made from 2500 to 2600 uh, from 2600 to 2700 was not uh, very tough it was less than a year yeah i think you did yeah. it when in somewhere in april 2022 so in, uh, i think in ma in february i i was 2614 uh, or maybe okay more than one year i think in because in 2021 late 2020 and i was already 2600 but then i didn't play for like three months and then I res uh, I resumed playing in February 2022 and I became 2700 in July so ah, July. yeah so uh yeah 2600 to 2700 was not very tough but uh, I think it it was due to the lessons that I learned the g- experience that I gained uh, from the two years before that so yeah it's i think th- those are also important uh, moments too obviously when you have uh, when you're in good form it feels nice you're winning yeah. you're winning continuously but it's also important to have these moments to gain experience to learn uh, learn new things so, yeah so right now you are world number 18 mm-hmm. and now there is such less space left to reach the top you know yeah. there are only 17 players better than you in terms of ratings mm-hmm. and these are all names you grew up on let's say there's magnus there karwana there ding anish what gives you the the self confidence that you can you know surpass them mm-hmm. and what makes you feel that you can be better than them all of them and become the world champion um i think if i just do the uh, right things if i keep working hard if i just uh, like just stay focused and just and keep working hard and gain experience learn learn things correct my weaknesses uh, i like uh, you can't say for sure if 
uh, you know you'll be able to do that but i believe that if you do all the right things you should be able to do that and uh, yeah i'm just focusing on like learning things and uh, working improving my game and at some point i if i keep improving at some point i'll i can can hopefully um, you know start beating them regularly and get to the uh, absolute elite so do you think a lot of your power and energy that you are able to bring out in chess comes from the fact that you focus on chess kind of exclusive in your exclusively in your life because i see like let's say when you wake up or sometimes when you are looking into your phone i'm like curious what are you doing mm-hmm. and i see that you are looking at some game in uh, some report some latest games you are checking mm-hmm. very few distractions no uh yeah i do have i do have like hobbies i do watch comedies and stuff but uh, yeah mostly i'm i'm engaged with uh, chess surely a lot of confidence i think comes from your work mm. at least for me i don't know how it's for others but for me i think uh, i'm more confident if i feel like i've done like i've worked uh, really hard if i i learned a lot of things like if i just became a better chess player i feel like that gives me more confidence so yeah i'm just trying to do that and yeah i'll just i'll just try to keep doing that at some point if i uh, like at some point i hopefully can uh, you know reach the level that i want to if i keep uh, doing the right things and how much of chess improvement do you think is pure chess work mm-hmm. and how much of it is also psychology because uh, i think i've also spoken to your long time trainer who was with you from a very young age vishnu and i think a lot of work was psychological as well uh, that you guys have done yes uh, like like as soon as we started working he we didn't really i mean we like spent uh, uh, like half our time with psychology like wow, wow. maybe not half our time but uh, a lot of time on psychology he, he used to just give me ideas to think about um, stuff like that and obviously it's very very important in any field but in chess especially psychology is very very important and uh yeah i'm also trying to spend some time with mm-hmm. with myself apart from apart from just trying to be in a good state of mind and like i'm also thinking how how to like you know perform at my give my best at any any given point so pure chess work is all all i mean obviously probably uh, more important but also psychology is i think very very important psychology and also physical physical work is also i think very important right if you if you had to pinpoint on maybe one of the most interesting stories that have happened in your chess journey until now mm-hmm. what would it be do you do you recollect something i think for me one of the things which uh i have only heard from maybe it was someone somewhere but never really from you mm-hmm. is uh you becoming a grandmaster and within like in your next journey or so spending the night at the airport uh is this true did this happen yeah i think after after i uh, became a grandmaster soon we left for like i think gibraltar within few days i think and then we uh yeah like we had a, a transit and we i mean it has always been normal normal for me like to stay in airports like stay I mean, in airports i mean not for days and days but <laughs> <laughs> like it was not too long but let's say like 
yeah i had to spend the night there and and we had a early morning flight or something like that and it's never been like uh, very and un- unnatural for me because i mean when we were like uh, financially struggling we used to do that quite quite regularly so um i mean still it's not like very look a very unnatural thing for me to do and uh, i guess my parents also want me to you know adjust to any any kind of conditions uh it has been an important thing for them like i should uh, you know like i should be able to enjoy you know, let's say good hotels and stuff like that but i also should be able to be comfortable with less you know uh, less uh, good conditions so uh that's something that uh, they always wanted me to do and and yes it's just uh, very natural for me so ye yeah, sometimes yeah. the comfort gets addictive you know like for example you go to tournaments now you play super tournaments mm-hmm. you always get the best of hotels there's usually a big buffet mm-hmm. and uh, you can generally ask the organizers for things and they would provide it to you mm-hmm. so it becomes some kind of a habit you know that you get the best because you are the best in the world mm-hmm. in what you do yeah. but then you say that you are also okay with things being substandard like you could maybe stay anywhere sleep anywhere eat anything uh yeah i guess it's good to be flexible you can't always control like you can always uh, have comfort i guess and uh, like even in lesser lesser conditions my parents try to you know not put me under too much discomfort <laughs> so they take care of like uh, other things but mostly but i i guess they also want me to you know just to uh not very comfortable conditions as well mm. oh, you are watching some series right now some movies and so on which are some of your favorite ones mm. and what do you enjoy when you watch i mean i used to watch a lot of movies mm. until 2021 at some point it got so bad that i was watching two movies a day really yeah And, and this uh, was during tournaments or no and in lockdown we were uh, just stuck here, so uh i used to spend a lot of time watching movies and at some point i realized that this is just not not uh, very good it was not giving you happiness or fun or no it's just uh, not not good for my chess i guess you you realize that this is not helping you to become better at chess yeah mm. so i at some for some time i uh i stopped watching movies and i i still don't watch a lot of movies when i'm traveling maybe i have nothing to do then i watch but uh, but uh, i try not to make it too much but uh, like entertainment is also i think important and i have i developed some good habits after that i started reading books and Uh, started reading about uh, like different things and stuff like that but uh like also but then i also start uh watched the uh, queen's gambit mm. so from that i kind of like got interested in uh, like series and so i'm i'm trying to keep it limited like let's say i'm i'm having dinner and then i put on some series and watch it for half an hour and then I, and then i go back so you are able to stop at that half an hour mark yeah i'm, I'm i mean of course i'm when you're watching it it's it gets very interesting so yes i can never stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i start yeah, like half an hour and then i watch for two hours sometimes <laughs> yeah when i travel maybe to not get bored or uh, something i i watch uh, maybe more than that but like when i'm at home i try to keep it limited and not uh, binge spend spend hours and hours watching watching stuff so uh 
yeah it's important to have an entertainment i think but to a to a limit you said that you you like reading some of the books mm. which which books are your favorites mm. mostly i read about sports out of biographies um i've read a lot but uh, maybe some of my favorites are abhinav bindra uh, sir book a short at history and uh, like sachin's book is also playing it my way is also very very good it's like um it's not some something that i'm just doing to learn but i enjoy it a lot so reading about their lives also so. uh obviously like all kinds of sports so getting to know more about uh, my my heroes like my idols it's it's nice so. when you pick up a book you finish it yeah one book not at a stretch <laughs> no not at a stretch but you generally mm. finish off what you start yeah i like to finish one book and then go to the next one um, yeah i mean uh, maybe when i do lot of things at once then maybe i just get confused so you're not a good multitasker i think so yeah <laughs> Maybe. maybe it also comes from just doing chess and nothing else <laughs> so i'm practiced uh, i'm used to doing just one thing at once right and and uh, you enjoyed queen's gambit uh, yeah it, it was a nice series but i mean i i can't say i loved it uh, for chess players like it's kind of weird to mm. <laughs> like i mean of course for maybe if it was great to popularize the game and it was nice for uh, non chess players to see how like we think and uh, what happens in chess tournaments but uh, for me it was just weird <laughs> i don't know it's <laughs> weird the way they move pieces or <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, also like uh, i don't know i just felt uh, i couldn't relate it too much you mm. know so i get it mm. i i get from you saying because when i show it to amruta uh, my wife uh, she so say, she she doesn't find it interesting although yeah. she's been a chess player all her life she feels yeah. like okay, maybe she's seeing it all over again what <laughs> or she's lived or something like that i mean it's a nice series and of course it was uh, huge very important to popularize uh, yeah for sure uh, for popularizing the game but yeah for me personally it was not um, i mean i enjoyed it a bit not i can't say i loved it is there something else that you are trying to learn at this point of time which is interesting you want to learn maybe in the coming days or something music maybe i mean i'm not trying to learn but i love music i listen to all kinds of songs not not instrumental music but like songs i i like to listen to but i can't uh, i mean i'm not very interested in learning anything nothing else actually i can't i mean i do have hobbies but nothing is like you know, learning learning to do something it's all the hobbies revolve around making you feel better or fresh so that you can work better at chess would it be right to say that uh, i also do some things just because i like it mm. um if i learn something from it it's good i also just like to do some things i i like mm. so when i'm doing non chess things it's often not uh, something that it's just for my chess but it's uh, i just try to do what i enjoy and if i learn something from it it's it's just a bonus it's good so yeah why do you like uh, djokovic why is he your favorite player sports player uh, no no i feel i really love uh, watching tennis and uh, I don't know I just like uh, watching him play and also 
uh, from what i know he is, seems to be like uh, very humble very friendly like i mean obviously only seen videos videos and, and uh, interviews but from what i can see i think he's very nice person uh, but yeah i mainly like like him for for the tennis i mean also he 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 was not as loved as let's say federer or nadal but still he was you know company equally well with them even when he didn't have such a great fan base so feel is like a fighter and it's i just like watching you, you relate play. to him as a player um like a fighter fighting yeah, yeah i think uh, i relate to him as a fighter but i don't know it's hard to make comparisons with mm-hmm. chess and tennis true but yeah i just really like uh, watching him play and uh, yeah recently in vikans i was uh, i was like seeing the life uh, life scores of his match i was playing for his uh, 22nd uh, grand slam and i was watching it live and i was so so happy when he when he won it so. wow yeah. amazing mukesh you know right now magnus is the world champion and very soon he won defend his world title mm-hmm. uh, nepo or ding will become the world champion when you were growing up uh, of course uh, you were still very young but let's say from 12 to 16 a lot of emphasis was put on classical chess you have yourself put a lot of it on it but suddenly online chess is becoming important shorter formats all of that do you sometimes worry that maybe chess might become something different from what you visualize it to be mm-hmm. does that thought cross your mind uh like i still think that classical will be at least for f- maybe few years or maybe couple of decades maybe it will still be the main main uh, main thing but uh, i mean it's obvious to see that online chess and rapid and blitz it's getting much more uh, attention than it used to be people are enjoying uh, watching rapid and blitz so uh yeah let's say for last last year when i went to i put a lot of uh, i was fully focusing on just classical but uh, now already i'm starting to um, have a balance i mean still classical is the main thing but i'm also playing online i'm playing rapid and blitz events um so i i do think uh, it's getting more and more important so it's it's a very i think it's important to be ready for a sudden change or something and also it's uh, like i mean people find it more fun so if uh, they get entertained by rapid and blitz it's uh, it's a nice thing Uh, yeah it will be it will be a challenge you know, to like kind of uh, think that you know rapid and blitz uh, if if it gets much more important it will be a challenge for everyone but um, yeah i'm trying to be like flexible and be ready for such a situation also but the fact the eventuality that chess will be solved or you know uh, maybe normal chess will cease to exist and chess 960 will come into the picture all of that mm. do you think that's one gonna... uh i don't see it happening at least for a like, few years i don't know maybe it will happen but uh, you, you never know it, it can happen but uh, like there can be so much theory at some point that it's just not very interesting to play classical but uh, right now i i feel like i don't know so much uh, so much i don't have so much knowledge so it's still very very interesting to me there's still a lot of areas that i can work on a lot of areas that i um, like i i can learn from but uh, I don't know maybe for experienced players they know have so much knowledge that it's hard to be creative mm-hmm. that's so uh, 
um i i hope it doesn't happen like you know just uh just getting solved but um it uh, it's possible maybe uh, i mean i i don't think it will happen but people have uh, talked to um like who, who i have discussed this topic with very experienced people think that it uh, it will most probably happen so mm. um it also makes sense to me but uh, yeah i don't think for a few years it's going to it's going so you, to so it doesn't worry you yeah not so much and this is a very interesting question uh what would you like to be remembered for in general let's say when mm. i mean many many years later mm. and for which you want to live your life and want people to remember you for mm. maybe as a a good chess player a dedicated chess player and and uh, you know uh, like i want to achieve uh, some some goals and um, like i would want to be remembered uh, let's say an elite player or something higher than that also but also i'd like to be remembered as a like, good person a friendly person so. yeah that's important for you uh, not as important as chess but it's it also has some importance for uh, for me personally well, like when you meet people and fans like we did yesterday at the mm-hmm. chess club how how much do you think it matters to you because you know chess is getting popular you have you are a star mm-hmm. when you arrive somewhere hundreds and 200 and 300 people sometimes gather up want pictures with you autographs mm-hmm. how, how much does that matter uh i think it's important but uh you know sometimes like let's say when i'm going for a game and and someone wants to uh you know spend like some time uh, for autographs and pictures i'm not very comfortable as i said chess is obviously like more important for me so i sometimes refuse uh, before the games and uh, i don't really enjoy spending time with fans before the games but uh, i think after the games when i'm not really you know like uh, trying to focus on something when i don't have a game it's nice to see so much so many people you know appreciate what i'm what i'm doing love uh, love chess and uh, want to learn something from me or something like that it's nice to see um but i say uh, as i said uh, it's uh, sometimes i refuse uh, you know photographs and autographs before before a game and i kind of feel uh, feel bad doing that but i also don't like to i also prefer not to uh get disturbed before the game to just focus on the games but yeah whenever i can say that whenever i was free or when i was uh, i was um, it's not you know trying to focus i would have i would all i would love to uh, spend time around fans so, yeah it's uh, it's a nice feeling of course brilliant well uh... Mukesh, your dedication, your ability to sort of be single-minded about your pursuits is so inspiring. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, maybe it's maybe not at the top of your priority list to be, as you said, like a chess trumps being a good person or so on. But I think you are a phenomenal person. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> just comes naturally to you, and uh, it it was wonderful spending time with you in the last. Three days that we had here, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm so grateful that you you came here. You recorded the first uh, ever uh, Fritz trainer over here. Mm-hmm. We did some chess ranga recordings, and uh, I got to spend time with you, yeah. uh, and did the first ever podcast. So thank you for for you know coming here. Yeah, no, I'm I must thank you for uh, inviting me. I mean, 
spending time with you and amruta as and the whole chess base india team has always been like very special to me i always enjoy your company and um, i mean i must say what you are doing with chess base india like all the projects that you are doing are very very important uh, and it's it's a great thing i mean i'm staying uh, at your place and seeing how hard your uh, you and amruta are working and it's just amazing i go to sleep often <laughs> i go to sleep often <laughs> yeah only only problem is you sleep often while you're working but <laughs> yeah that that shows how how hard you're working and how draining it is for you so uh, i mean amazing job so thank yeah you. i must thank you for like as a chess player for doing so much it's yeah. my pleasure and uh, i think it goes both ways and i always keep telling uh, people who say oh chess base india is doing a great job and i say if there were no uh, players uh, <laughs> like you yeah. who would be representing our country at the world stage becoming world beaters no one would be interested in following the sport so it's yeah. it's something that we all do together and uh, i am i'm just very happy that we did this so thanks gupesh yeah thank you it was uh... It was a nice time in Mumbai and all the all the recordings we did all the I mean this podcast everything was uh, super nice and hope the uh, fans will also enjoy it uh, enjoy it a lot. Yes, and time to catch your flight. Uh, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Let's talk.